Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us again. Uh, once again, Paul and I are talking to you from the Cross Insurance Center here in Bangor. And uh, just behind our camera, we can see people going through the line, um, prepared, getting their vaccine. Give you a quick update on some numbers around the state for Northern Light Health. As of this morning, we have 14 total inpatients within our system who are positive for COVID-19. Six of them are at Eastern Maine Medical Center, four at Mayo Hospital, three at Mercy Hospital, and one at Sebastopol Valley Hospital. In addition to that, our home care and hospice team are taking care of one individual at their home who's positive for COVID-19. Once again, I use these numbers as a word of caution. Um, while these numbers are great and we'd like to see them coming down, if you notice in Piscataquis County, we're seeing a little bit of an increase there. And so we want to make sure that that does not continue to spread. And uh, so once again, asking people to wear their face coverings out in public, staying six feet apart and washing their hands frequently. Let's give a little quick update on the vaccine process. As of yesterday, we have administered a total of 58,000 589 doses of vaccine against COVID-19. This represents 37,953 first doses, 20,636 second doses. Today, appointment scheduling for each of our clinics is open to Maine residents age 60 and over. This is in accordance with the direction by the governor's office and the Maine CDC. We have already seen a tremendous willingness among this age group to be vaccinated. Mercy Hospital has now opened up its Portland Expo vaccination site and it's, holding, it's held its first clinic at that location today, the Mercy, or yesterday I mean. The Mercy team has successfully vaccinated 510 people and received a lot of positive feedback from those who attended. The new, new site is open on Tuesdays and Thursdays by appointment only. Registration again is available on our websites on Monday and West, Wednesday afternoon, just like our other clinics. If you'd like to learn more about this new vaccine location, visit Mercy Hospital's Facebook page to view a helpful video about what the experience is like at the expo from start to finish. In addition to that, Northern Light Home Care and Hospice is operating a vaccine site at the main mall. Home Care and Hospice expects to vaccinate about 70 people today at their opening event. There has been some confusion as to which number to call to register for the main mall clinics. The correct number is 207-204-8551. Home Care and Hospice also fills a critical role in Maine's vaccination strategy by offering clinics. So far, the team has, ha, uh, has been able to uh, perform clinics in Callis, Peak Island, Cornish, sorry, uh, Limington, Waterboro, Waterville, Brewer, and Kittery to vaccinate those who have limited access or cannot travel. This week, clinics are planned for Mohegan Island, Biddeford, Bridgeton, and Stonington. Home Care and Hospice also works with senior housing locations and immigrant communities to improve access to vaccination. Here at the Cross Insurance Center, we continue to hold vaccination clinics on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Each clinic has the capacity to vaccinate around 1,300 first doses and 1,300 second doses each day. This is adjusted based upon our vaccine um, allotment and what is received. As stated, we have had great response from the newly eligible population and our appointments for this week are mostly filled. And again, as a reminder, we open up new appointments each Monday and Wednesday at 2 p.m. I'll turn it over to Paul to give it a little bit of an update on volunteerism. Great, thanks, Dr. Jarvis. At last week's uh, conference, we talked about uh, our need and openness for uh, additional volunteers. Um, as with so many things uh, related to COVID and our vaccine efforts, uh, we've been overwhelmed with positive responses from community members. Um, we have businesses such as Bangor Savings Bank, um, communities such as the city of Bangor uh, providing uh, staff and support uh, to our clinics, uh, just to name a few. Um, and we've received at this point over 1,500 interested participants with non-clinical skills uh, to provide uh, volunteer uh, work at the Cross Insurance Center. Um, and we know that number uh, at this time is exceeding our ability to place people into spots. So those who've uh, expressed interest, um, we are working through uh, an appropriate screening process uh, for our volunteers. Um, it, this is a, a, just a, a fantastic outpouring of positive uh, support by the community. Um, and we're very, very happy uh, to, to uh, work with folks in that regard. Um, but it will take time. And we know this vaccination uh, effort will take place over the next uh, several weeks and months. Um, and so we will have uh, many opportunities uh, in the future uh, to, uh, to employ those, uh, uh, um, uh, those willing to uh, be employed or 
uh, volunteer through the clinics, um, as well as additional volunteer opportunities at other sites, such as the Portland Expo, but also in more in closer communities to the greater Bangor area, uh, such as uh, Pittsfield, uh, uh, Ellsworth, and the like. And so uh, more to come on that front. Um, but just wanted to extend a, certainly an appreciation um, to those who have already expressed interest um, and those with uh, clinical skills, clinical licensure, uh, physicians, nurses, uh, pharmacists, and others from the community who are interested in volunteering. Uh, we do have, continue to have additional opportunities um, for volunteers with those clinical skill sets and licensure. Um, so more to come on that, uh, but I just wanted to, again, extend that level of appreciation for the positive support thus far. Thank you, Paul. <clears throat> Last week, Governor Mills announced that Maine is adopting an age-based approach to eligibility, effective today. Once we learned that Maine would expand eligibility to those 60 years and older, we quickly updated our website to accommodate signups for this new age group. This change went smoothly, and we are pleased to be able to offer this vaccine to more community members. In addition, the governor announced that she'd like us to prioritize educators and those working within schools who meet the age eligibility requirement. Northern Light Health is happy to assist in this effort. And we have submitted a plan this morning for how we can do that at the nine hospitals that are currently running vaccination clinics, as well as our home care and hospice submitting their own individual plan um, to help as well. So with that, we are very happy and pleased with what we have been able to do to help our fellow Mainers out. And we'll open it up for questions. Thanks, Dr. Jarvis. Uh, thank you, Paul. Um, WVII has let me know that they don't have a question at this point. So we're going to start with uh, WABI and Spencer Roberts. Uh, Spencer, you should be able to unmute now. Thank you. Um, I, I may have missed you if you mentioned, missed if you mentioned this, but the Piscataquis County Ice Arena, uh, I believe we got a release about that be becoming a clinic. Do you have anything about that you can mention? So it is true that we have, we have worked with the Piscataquis County um, Ice Arena in order to use that as a vaccination site. Plans are underway. Um, right now, we are, we are uh, working on the logistics for how we can convert that particular space so that we can further um, serve that particular community. And so once we know a little bit more in details and can talk a little bit more about that, we will certainly uh, present that to the media. Perfect. Um, I was actually at, at outside the uh, clinic there, there where you are earlier today, and I was chatting with some folks as they were coming out. I asked them if they wanted to chat with me. And Everyone I spoke to said uh, things went smoothly. Uh, it was kind of seamless. Uh, have there been any other hiccups you, uh, to mention? I mean, it seems like everybody was pretty, pretty pleased that I spoke with. <laughs> yeah, and we're glad to hear that, and we, we love to hear that kind of feedback. Um, other than uh, registration, which has been an issue for everybody across the state and, frankly, around the country, um, we really feel that the operations we have built across Northern Light Health, particularly here at the Cross Insurance Center, have been running very well. I myself was down at the Expo in Portland on, on Monday uh, doing some final logistics planning um, and, and having spoken to those that worked at the clinic there on Tuesday, uh, things went exactly the way we had planned them out. Um, it is our, our uh, mission to make sure that this is a, as an efficient, smooth, and most importantly, safe endeavor for people to get vaccinated. We want people to feel very safe when they come into our vaccination clinics, much like we've been doing in our hospitals and our practices um, since the pandemic began. And so we, we are following that model across uh, all, all of our Northern Light Clinic sites. So again, appreciate that. We continue to work on our website to make it more efficient for people to be able to, be, to get scheduled for appointments as well as on our phone line. Um, but again, uh, it is good news. We have overwhelming response of individuals who want to be vaccinated. And oftentimes that, that can make it so that there are delays both on the website and the call center. So we once again ask for people's patience. Remember, Monday and Wednesday afternoons after 2 p.m. is when we will open up slots based on availability of vaccine. Thanks, Spencer, for your question. Uh, next up, we have Patty White, Maine Public. Go Thanks ahead, Patty. Much. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Jarvis, can you tell us a little bit more about your plans to prioritize school staff? What will that look like and how quickly will you be able to do, to do that? So great question, Patty. So it was about, you know, what are our plans to help uh, to vaccinate those who, who work in schools? So it really depends on the particular site and location. As you can imagine, uh, depending on uh, county population, the, the number of individuals in a particular county who fit into this category varies. And so our plans here for the Cross Insurance Center are a little bit different than they'll be, say, at the Expo um, or one of our smaller sites that we've talked about before. 
And so really it's an individual plan. Um, we have to wait for acceptance by the state for our plan before we make any formal announcements. Um, the goal was that by uh, the end of next week, so the 12th, 13th, and 14th are the dates that the governor has set aside as being dates that she would like to see us um, assist in vaccinating um, those individuals who work at schools who are over the age of 60. And so as we, as we can uh, get more agreement from the state and more understanding of what the state uh, intends to, for us to do, we will pass that along. Um, but uh, for the most part, we'll be, we'll be basically extending our hours or adding clinics uh, at most of our sites to accommodate this. Okay, thanks. And with today being the first day that people 60 and older can get vaccinated, do you know how many people in that age group you're, you're in that newly eligible age group that you're vaccinating today compared to people 70 and up? So, Patty, I don't have those specific numbers, but I can tell you that, that uh, a large percentage of the individuals that are here today are in that category of 60 to 70. Um, I will tell you it's a little bit of a different, a different feel. Um, uh, somewhat delighted to see uh, that we, we have less people that have mobility issues. Um, though we have made every, every uh, precaution to take care of people with mobility issues, we have plenty of wheelchairs on site. Um, everything at both the, the Portland Expo and at the Cross Insurance Center are all on one floor so people don't have to worry about navigating stairs or using elevators or anything along those lines. Um, but it is nice to see that today we have fewer, fewer people that need wheelchairs. Um, it makes it a little bit more efficient, uh, a little bit easier for us. Uh, but overall, continue the same positive mood we've seen um, during this entire um, vaccination effort. People are thankful that they're able to be here um, and, and the, they're, they're grateful for the people who are volunteering their time to be here to assist others. Thank you. Thanks, Patty. Um, we will go to Bob Evans, New Center, Maine. Uh, good afternoon. Um, Dr. Jarvis, how will the new J&J &J vaccine work into your mixture of doses sent to your different facilities? And do you think this addition might be a game changer? So the question was about whether or not the Johnson & Johnson vaccine that was recently given emergency use authorization, um, how that will fit into our clinics. For right now, uh, it is unknown because we don't know the exact amounts of Johnson & Johnson vaccine that we will be getting at each location. I can tell you that our major sites, particularly that the one in Portland and the one here in Bangor, we will continue to use Pfizer. We are very, very good at using the Pfizer vaccine, and we currently have um, allotments of that in large enough quantities to fulfill our needs. I suspect that we will, over the next week or so, determine how best we can use Johnson & Johnson. It may be better suited for getting out into our more rural communities, but right now we feel comfortable and confident that we can continue to use Pfizer and Moderna across our hospital to meet the needs of our communities like we have been. And I have one question for Paul. Sure. We'll give the cameraman a second to get over. Um, <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> hey, Paul, um, that's great news about uh, the amount of volunteers that you are getting. But we have heard of, from a few people the application process to be a volunteer is pretty lengthy and includes social security numbers. Uh, people have asked if that's a necessary step. Sure, and so the question is really regarding the screening of volunteers. And so we do uh, perform background checks as appropriate for volunteers. And part of that check process is social security number information. Similarly, employees, uh, you know, going to an employer also provide that information as well. Um, but it is important for us uh, to make sure that we have uh, the appropriate people who've been properly vetted, um, taking care of our patients, our community and our colleagues. And so um, that is an important part of our process uh, to appropriately screen and vet anyone volunteering on our behalf. Yeah, once again, I'll just point out that safety is the most important priority to us. And so we want to make sure that no matter what definition we use of safety, that we are meeting that goal. We want pe people to feel secure and safe while they're within one of our vaccination clinics. All right. Thank you, Bob, for your questions. Um, next up, we have um, Kevin Miller, Portland Press Hero. Can you just a sec, Kevin? Okay, you should be good. Great, thank you very much. Uh, so yesterday, some big news coming out of uh, Washington, the Biden administration talking about a much um, much larger uh, number of um, vaccines potentially going to states. 
I guess my question would be, you know, what's you know what's your capacity for you know how how much and how quickly can you ramp up if Maine starts to see a significant increase in the number of vaccines? You know, do you have additional capacity at your facilities now that you wouldn't need to do much more, or would you have to bring in additional volunteers, additional uh, staff, and things like that to 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 accommodate if you got a whole bunch more vaccine doses. Yeah, so Kevin, that's a great question about what do we have in terms of capacity, particularly if we were to get more vaccine. As we said uh, multiple times before, you know, we built our facilities in order to handle large volumes of people. That's what we wanted to do um, and that we wanted the only limiting factor to be how much vaccine we had on site. And so here at the Cross Insurance Center, we could scale up to 5,000 doses a day. Right now, we feel very comfortable that 3,000 doses a day, we would not need to do anything differently than what we're doing now. Similarly, at the Portland Expo, they feel that they can scale up. Remember, they just opened up yesterday, so they're still kind of feeling out the logistics of how things go. But we feel very comfortable after a very successful opening down there that they too can scale up, certainly not to the level of the cross center simply because it's not that big, um, but they can certainly add to that. And then similarly, our smaller clinics across the state are all stepping up and saying, if we can expand out um, you know, the number of people we can get through in a single day, then we need to expand out more days. It will come down to staffing for us at some point. Um, there are many people in this facility right now, myself included, who have been at every one of our public clinics since we started vaccinating the general population. Um, some of them have been, are, you know, frankly, they're tired. And so we want to make sure that we, we have enough reserve in there that we can keep them going for the long haul. This is not a sprint, it's a marathon, and we are prepared for that marathon, and we will meet the needs of our community as the resources come into play. So at this time, I do not think that we, will, that, that we would come into a situation where we can't meet those de demands, but if that is the case, we will find ways to do so. Great. And maybe uh, a follow-up question for uh, for Paul, just on the staffing. You'd mentioned that there were uh, you still had additional needs or capacity for clinical um, volunteers. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that? You know, what kind of what kind of people in particular are you looking for to uh, to volunteer, and how many openings do you have? Sure. Thanks. And so, at this point, we've scheduled out um, our clinical volunteers. So we're talking about physicians, nurses, pharmacists, um, uh, paramedics, and others with appropriate clinical training and clinical licensure to administer vaccine. Um, in addition, medical assistants and certified medical assistants are also among that group uh, who are qualified to um, administer vaccine. And so as we schedule our clinics out, uh, and continue to add and expand those clinics, we're, we're taking from um, our existing volunteer pool as well as our existing staff um, and scheduling those. Um, we are preparing to ramp up for additional dosage, which is why um, those with that clinical ex expertise um, are still uh, needed to become uh, enrolled as volunteers um, so that as, the, as our needs unfold in the coming weeks, um, as we receive more doses uh, of vaccine, we're able to accommodate that uh, and are prepared well in advance. And so the, this request really is, is part of our prospective need uh, for volunteers and staff uh, at our clinics. Um, but we do have our existing clinics um, that are all scheduled out uh, through the end of March, uh, at this point, uh, largely staffed and, uh, and scheduled. All right, thank you, Kevin, for your questions. Uh, next up, we have uh, David, Bangor Daily News. David, you should be fine to unmute now. Great, thanks. I have a question for Dr. Jarvis. Um, you touched on this a little bit, but I wanted to clarify something. Um, yesterday, a Northern Light spokesperson told the BDN that the system, Northern Light system, is currently not setting aside any vaccine for educational staff. Um, and so with these, uh, these days you planned on the 12th, 13th, and 14th, are you setting aside vaccine right, um, right now for those days ahead? Um, and could you talk about any other movement that you're, you know, that is happening on this issue right now? Yeah, so I think there might have been a little bit of a miscommunication there. So uh, we, we do not set aside vaccine for any particular uh, location or, or um, clinic until we actually have that vaccine on site. And so we do not, the order for vaccine for that week um, does not go out until today or tomorrow from the state. And so we need to, to determine what it is that the state will have for us. We are making plans, like I said, to work within what the state has asked of us. And so once we know that, and once the state has either approved or asked us to alter what our plans are, we will adjust accordingly. 
And so, uh, so again, uh, I think for this week, um, we, we were unable to, to have any uh, additional clinics at this particular time, simply because we had already scheduled those clinics out um, and had most of our appointments filled. Uh, but going forward, we, we will do it what, what's necessary to assist in, in uh, taking care of this particular population. Great. Um, thank you for clarifying that. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, again, you touched on this a little bit earlier, but with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine being approved, could you envision the Crest Center operating at full capacity, uh, vaccinating 5,000 a day? I know you said that you were you know, comfortable with the, you know, with, without use, using it currently, but uh, are you doing anything to prepare for that change? Could you see that being something you, that happens in the future with multiple vaccines being administrated at the Cross Insurance Center? So that's a great question, is, is whether or not we, we envision that we will use multiple vaccines at one of our uh, particular sites. And so if you think about it, every year when we administer flu vaccines, we have multiple different flu vaccines that we administer uh, simultaneously at our clinics. And so this is something that we do on a regular basis. So we're already prepared to handle multiple vaccines at a particular site. Uh, we'd prefer not to because just from a logistics standpoint, uh, if you think about it, the Pfizer vaccine requires a second dose three weeks out, the Moderna of four weeks out. Currently, Johnson & Johnson is, is just looking at the one dose, but that may change going forward. And so we need to be prepared for all of that. Logistically, I like things simple because it, it prevents error um, and also it makes it more comfortable for our patients coming through. So if we can keep a site with a particular vaccine, vaccine we try to do that as much as possible. Um, but we are welcome to, to, to use different vaccines. Like I said, that's just a normal part of our course when it comes to vaccinations. I've said this many times before. If there's one thing that health systems and healthcare workers do very well, it is vaccination. This is what we do day in and day out. You know, we vaccinate our children, we vaccinate our elders. Um, so we're very good at vaccinations. And, uh, and now we've just shown that we can scale up. And instead of doing a handful of vaccines a day, we literally are doing 10,000 vaccines a day or a week. All right. Um, thanks, David. Um, before we get to uh, WMTW, um, it looks like we might have a couple of extra minutes at the end. Um, if you have any additional follow up questions, just let us know in the chat and we'll get to as many of them as we can. Um, Alice, WMTW, you're up and you should be uh, unmuted now. Hello, uh, question for you. Uh, you know, we've mentioned the big announcement yesterday from the president um, about prioritizing educators, getting them to have at least their first dose of the vaccine here by the end of this month. Wondering, have you heard anything from the state on if this changes how um, the rollout will, will occur here? Is this something that will only be done by, you know, CVS, Walgreens, pharmacies, or are these educators going to be prioritized regardless of age, um, you know, in a variety of different vaccination sites. So I've had some brief conversations with the state early this morning. Uh, as with everything with COVID, things change very rapidly. And so I have no additional information beyond what we have shared about what our, what our current uh, plan proposal was to the state, waiting to hear back from the state and follow their guidance. Um, we have worked very well with the state for this entire pandemic, and we will continue to, to, uh, to work with whatever guidance that they, they provide to us. But right now, I have no further details, either on the comments that uh, the president made last night or where, whether that has changed any process here in the state of Maine. Okay, thank you. So just to, just to be clear at this time, you know, you guys are just waiting for information like everyone else, essentially. Correct. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, question from the chat. Um, this one is for you, Dr. Jarvis. Can you say anything more about Piscataquis Ice Arena vaccination site? Any I don't have perspective date that it will begin or plan vaccines per week. Yeah, I don't have any specifics on that right now. Um, it was actually some uh, relatively good news that we got uh, yesterday that they were able to actually clear the ice arena so that we could start looking at how we can build on that that site. And so a details are a little bit early right now. Um, and uh, hopefully by our press briefing by next week, we can, we can give you a little bit more specifics on that. Okay, uh, Bob, you had another question. You should be unmuted now. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Jarvis, you mentioned that uh, you like staying with the same vaccine at some of the facilities because it makes it easier and less er room for error, which makes sense. Um, what is the Expo uh, using? Is that the same? 
Currently, the Expo is using Pfizer as well. So again, if you remember back uh, when we started talking about vaccines, Northern Light Health purchased four ultra-cold freezers and strategically placed them around the state uh, at Mercy Hospital, Eastern Maine Medical Center, Mayo Hospital, and A.R. Gould Hospital. And so we, because we have the ability to store close to our large-scale and medium-scale vaccination sites, it's why we prefer to use Pfizer. It has nothing to do with the efficacy. The efficacy of all three of these vaccines is extremely high, as is the safety profile. So from a patient standpoint, um, I still recommend uh, that you get the vaccine that's offered to you next. Um, that's the important thing is to get vaccinated. Um, but from a logistics standpoint, because we can handle Pfizer at those four institutions without any difficulty uh, with storage situations, that's the reason why we prefer to have them there. That allows us then to move our Moderna and hopefully a, a supply of Johnson & Johnson to our more rural locations in order to, to meet the needs of those communities. All right, uh, two more questions. Uh, Alice, we'll start with you. Uh, you should be able to unmute now. Thank you. A uh, quick question for you. I'm um, wondering if you can touch at all on the uh, scheduling for getting your second Pfizer and second Moderna shot. I know that, um, you know, there is the recommended 21 days for Pfizer, 28 days for Moderna. Um, but we've had a, a number of people reach out to us who have some concerns about perhaps they're being scheduled, you know, a week after that, you know, ideal time frame with the new guidelines from the CDC uh, giving up to, I think, what is it, 42 days after after the first dose. Can you just provide any insight, some clarity for people who, who may have questions about about uh, the ideal time for them to get their second dose, regardless of, of which shot it is? Sure, so it's a great question about, you know, what's the ideal timing for your second shot, whether it be Moderna or Pfizer? Um, and while there is a little bit of room there um, on the far side of the vaccine, we don't want anybody to get their second dose too early. So for Pfizer, that means waiting at least 21 days and Moderna at least 28 days. However, those were the dates that happened with the, with the studies that originally got the emergency use authorization. As with everything, we learn more over time. However, here's the problem is that you need to make sure there's a clinic scheduled for you to get your dose at an appropriate time. And so at Northern Light Health, we have committed that when you get uh, scheduled for your first dose for the vaccine, we schedule you for your second dose at an appropriate time interval with a clinic so that you know that there is a clinic with vaccine waiting for you at that appropriate time. So that's why it's so important. If you were to miss that second clinic, we can try to make arrangements for you to get your second dose. But logistically, we can't run clinics all the time with just having people walk in when, it, when they want to for their second dose. And so that's why it's critically important that when you think about scheduling your first dose for either the Pfizer or Moderna, you think about the time frame for the second dose so that you know that you're free um, to be able to receive that dose, meaning that you're not traveling outside the state, um, uh, because that will just help you to get it at the perfect timing. And that's really what we're looking for. We want to have the, the best results from every vaccine that we administer. So I do know that there are some, some states that have put a lot of wiggle room in there. But here in Maine, where we do things based on science, uh, we want things to be as perfect as possible. And that's the way we've set up all of our clinics so that, you know, if you get your Pfizer here at, at Cross Insurance Center today, exactly three weeks from today, there is a clinic with vaccine for you. Okay, and final question comes from uh, Patty White, and this is for you, Dr. Jarvis. She asks, can you tell us how many doses total Northern Light administers each week and what total capacity you could ramp up to across all of your clinics? So that's a great question. So it varies week to week for a lot of different reasons. Sometimes it varies simply because of vaccine allocation to us and we can only give what we get. Um, and sometimes it has to do with whether or not we can increase uh, the number of vaccine clinics. So Cross Insurance Center initially was running at three days a week. We are now at four days a week. Uh, we feel very comfortable that, that this week we will probably administer around 7,000 doses just from Cross Insurance Center alone and close to 10,000 doses across all of Northern Light, including our home care and hospice. But, the but there's a, typically a weekly fluctuation, again, based on vaccine uh, allocation to us. Uh, but again, we feel very comfortable that we could get to a point where we could be vaccinating, uh, you know, quite a significant more than what we're doing right now. Hey, thanks, Dr. Jarvis. Uh, that, that wraps up questions for today. Um, if you haven't already and you'd like a high quality copy of the video from today's media conference, please let us know in the chat on your way out today.
Um, thanks for joining us as always. Um, Dr. Jarvis, the final word is yours. Once again, thank you for joining us. Uh, I, I've told many people this. Uh, this is the best job I've ever had because I get to see the smiling faces of all those people who are getting their vaccine. And for those of you who are waiting for your vaccine, remember, it is now a matter of when, not if. So everybody will be vaccinated in time. Uh, we just need to get more vaccine. But when we do, we will be there for you. Thank you.